Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's a pretty bright November day today, so much so that I've had to close the blinds because there was too much light coming from behind my head. I was just in silhouette um, and that's not good. So it's time for November's Mission Inspiration over on the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So let me turn over to my overhead camera. I'll show you the prompts for November and then we'll get cracking on my art journal page for the month. Okay, so overhead camera on to coffee at the ready. So these are the prompts for November. I've got my art journal ready to go. So let's just quickly run through the prompts and then we'll get started on what we're going to be doing. So we've got add paint to your background. So that can be in any format, any colour. You could either put it on with a wet wipe, with a brush, with your fingers. It doesn't really make any difference. So add a focal collage element. OK, fair enough. So create texture with 3D texture paste or structure paste or whatever it is that you've got. Um, you can even use flour and water if you haven't got anything other than that. Uh, use watercolour pencils or crayons. So they could be any kind of water soluble um, <coughs> pen, pencil, whatever you've got. Uh, use a stencil or two. OK, add a hand lettered quote or phrase. I don't know why I do this to myself every month. Hand lettering. Ugh, not my favourite, but there you go. Um, make marks with a kitchen item. <laughs> That's going to be fun. OK, and then finally, include found objects, for example, buttons. OK, well, I've already gone and found some buttons um, that I'm going to be using in my projects. So I've got those here to one side already. Uh, words for inspiration this month are serenity, whimsy, explore, sleep and discover. Um, right, sleep. I'm going to use that one, I think, as my main inspiration, because we've recently been rediscovered um, the English band, indie band, Florence and the Machine. And one of the songs that I like, um, one of the opening lines is kind of cute and it has, well, it's about sleeping pills. So <laughs> I'm going to use that as my phrase. Um, so the word sleep in there is just perfect. I've got my paints out and I was just trying to decide what, um, what kind of palette I'm going to be using today. And I thought, OK, well, seeing as we're going into autumn um and we've got all those beautiful kind of yellows oranges and reds on the trees i thought that's what i kind of used today so but just as a kind of contrast i've got some sea aqua so just in case i want to add some green into that i'm going to use that so i'm going to have ochre i've got pure orange and let's have a look there's a kind of corally color coral shell maybe um and then what's that one dried clay yeah i think those are going to be really really nice together and then you've got that contrasting kind of pop of green so that's what we're going to do so i've just covered over last month's page that i did because it's kind of bright and shiny um yes i'm got using the same kind of color palette but you know that's the sort of mood I'm in and we're allowed to do what we're in the mood for because there's no point not. All right, let's shift that coffee out of the way. I've got some tissue paper, I've got some water and some paint brushes. So I'm just, mm, they're not exactly the cleanest paint brushes, but that's all right. We don't mind a bit of grunge. Don't mind a bit of grunge at all. So I thought what I might do is I might kind of do a bit of a sort of cubisty kind of um, effect in the background on this one. So let me just see if I've got, have I got a paint mat handy? Yes, I have. There we go. That'll do. Use that as my palette. So I'm going to start off with the dried clay. So when I say kind of cubisty, I mean kind of blocked so let's just grab some of that paint I've not gessoed so let's just start creating some kind of blocks of colour so 
and I'll go around just adding in different blocks and like I said it might be a bit dirty on the brush because I didn't clean it properly but that's okay like I said grunge is good so let's do a tall one Another small one over here. I'm not necessarily going to stick to kind of like the rule of thirds today. Well, I say the rule of thirds, the clumping of like threes and odd numbers. So, what I might do is I might just do a fifth one down here just to satisfy that kind of odd numbery kind of thing that people like. I'm not going right to the edge of the page either. That'll do. All right, so that's that. Just to dry the brush off a little bit, a little bit. and then we'll come in with that ochre now. And because I've not gessoed the page, it will probably, the paint will probably soak in quite quickly, which is good, which is fine. Don't mind that. And then what I'll do, I'm going to start creating some blocks around there and then maybe join up. I don't mind if I just cross over, that's all right. Lovely colour combination, very warm. And go it helps if you've got a square brush if you're doing stuff like this so we've got four there so let's just add another smaller square up there that'll do so i think it must be season for junk mail today already in november we've had three deliveries of junk mail through already and it's only just gone lunchtime pizza companies and double glazing and security companies so want to sell your cameras and that kind of thing for your house lots and lots of leaflets coming through the door all unwanted stuff or stuff you've already got like double glazing don't know why they bother. Right, so we've got the orange. A bit of a random rant that, wasn't it? Okay, so let's let's start meeting them up. I'm not particularly too bothered whether or not they if they do cross over or not. You can, if you want to, just go up and over into the next shape. still a bit wet but that's all right don't mind a bit of color blending in fact let's bring that down okay so you've got the pretty the gist of what i'm doing over here so i think i'm going to carry on until i've completely covered um, the page in these kind of color blocks so i'll carry on i'll put some music on and I'll join with you in the end, or at the end, when I've kind of filled in all those gaps. So cue music. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't know why I just started coughing then. <coughs> right, now a drink, a tidy up, a clean up, and then I'll be right back. If I survive. <coughs> right, that's all dry. So we've got add paint to the background. So that's now done. So I'm going to jump over a couple now. It says use a stencil or two. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I've got uh, a couple of newish stencils. So this one's brand new. This one's called Twinkle. I don't know whether you can see that. I've oh, got something dark I can show you on. There we go, a bit of black paper. So a star one. So it's like a nice star background. Um, perfect for Christmas as well, if you wanted like a starry background. So there's that one. That's now available on the website. That's brand new today. Um, or when you're watching this, yesterday, because I did it on Friday. I'm doing this on Friday. Um, so that's called Twinkle. And the other one, which is fairly new, which is a kind of rough, damaged Harlequin. So distressed Harlequin kind of affair. So not it's it's grungy, if you know what I mean, without being too grungy. Um, you've still got that kind of diamond pattern, but it's kind of odd, you know, broken up kind of thing. Uh, almost like a net, if you like. So I'm going to be using those two. So first of all, I'm going to be using the green that we pulled in, the Sea Aqua, for a bit of contrast and a bit of pop. So let's just daub a little bit of that down. Grab a sponge. Now this, I think this sea aqua works really well as a kind of verdigris. So it works really, really well with earth tones like the ochre and your corals. It really works as a nice kind of pop against those colours. I may be wrong, that's just my opinion, but I think it works beautifully. But I may be completely mad. Has been said before. So I'll lay that one down, grab some more, and let's do some of that. Let's do some of that. I like pouncing, but you could scrub if you want to. I just like the texture that I get from the sponge doing it that way. I can get a nice kind of fade effect like I have there, which we do like. We do like a lot. I do sometimes love mixing up the palette. So instead of going all complementary and or coordinating and do something which is like really outrageous. Some colours that just like don't necessarily work together. Just as a bit of a, you know, rebel. Just rebel a bit. It's not wrong with a nice bit of rebellion. Just as Princess Leia. There we go. I like that. I really like the contrast of the colours on that. So let me get that dried off. I'll clean my fingers as well. Get this cleaned off and I'll be right back. Alrighty then. So the next one is that twinkle stencil. And I'm going to use a cream colour. Not white, but a cream colour. This is light buttermilk. Mm-mm. Buttermilk. We like buttermilk. I like buttermilk chicken. Right, so let's add some of those stars, those twinkly stars in the background. So let's load up on paint. And again, I'm just going to pounce just lightly. There we go. Oh. 
Let's have some over there. This probably might work better if I do the sweeping motion, actually. Let's do both and see what happens. And then go back with a pounce. To be honest, do we ever do whichever you want one that you like doing the most we've all got our own preferred little techniques and materials and the way we do things we like to do things our own way that's what developing a style is all about and i did say about not doing things in groups of three didn't i and i've just gone completely gone against my own word there haven't I? Just nod and say yes, Mike. There we go. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, okay. So, again, I'm going to get cleaned up, dried off, and we'll be back for the next step. Okay, so I've also just gone and washed my stencils and cleaned the paint off the stencils. You don't have to. Stencil care is one of those things some people like to clean their stencils straight away with damp cloth baby wipe whatever um, some like to go and wash them in the sink like i do um, sometimes though um, i just leave them as they are so there's one that's a very old in fact this is probably one of the oldest stencils i own this is the um art is from um tc is it TCW, the Crafters Workshop. Yeah, I think this is one of the first stencils that I ever bought. And look at the state of it. It's filthy. It's falling to pieces. It's bent. <laughs> it's just dirty, dirty, dirty. But it still works. So I ain't got any plans to get rid. Um, all right, so we've done that. So we've used a stencil or two. I'm going to use another one now as well. Um, and add a little bit of texture paste. So this is the grungy bits stencil and I'm going to employ a little bit of texture just with some of those um, bits in the corner. I don't want anything to interfere with my collage items. So just make sure it's all nice and then do that a bit too much there. I'm only going to use a little bit. I'm not going to use a lot. In fact, that's probably going to be it. Um, and I'll do another little bit over here. Again, just a small amount. And this really is just to say that I've done it. Um, and I'll add some more. My focal point is going to go about here, so I think maybe just down there, just where there's a teeny, teeny overlap. Oh, look at that. Cut. No, I'm going to leave it in because, you know, it's one of them things. Yes, I've just put my hand in the texture paste I've just put down. So... Let's get rid quickly, just really lightly with that baby wipe. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want to take the paint off. There we go. Right, let's do that again, shall we? See, every time I say, oh, I'm liable to get my elbow in it, I'm sure people think, yeah, like that never happens. <laughs> There you go. The proof, as it were. Right, so move that out of the way. Let's turn that around again. I'll we'll just put a little bit down here. And again, like I said, this is just to say that I've done it. So we've got three lots of structure and texture paste. Whatever you want to call it. 
modeling paste, structure paste, texture paste, whatever, whatever name it goes by. Right, so what I'll do is I'll have a quick tidy up, dry that off, and then I shall go cry into a glass of milk. No, I'm only kidding. Oh, come on, this wet wipes won't open. Right, I'm off. Right, so create texture with 3D texture paste. Okie dokie. So we'll leave the collage element for now. Use watercolor pencils or crayons. Right, okay. Um, no, we'll leave that to last as well. Um, so the next is make marks with a kitchen item. I'm leaving the hand lettered coat towards the end. Um, I'm going to add my collage. I'm going to do some drop shadows and stuff with the watercolour pencils or crayons. So I already thought about that. And then add the hand lettered coat, probably last or second to last. So make the marks with a kitchen item and include the found object. So buttons. The buttons are going to be the very, very last thing that I add. Or I'm going to add the buttons and then do the hand lettered quote. Can't decide yet. But anyway, make marks with a kitchen item. <laughs> right, I'm just going to go raid the kitchen. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, I've raided Ian's cake decorating drawer. This is his baking, um, from his baking equipment. So this is a comb used for putting texture on icing around the edge of a cake. So that's going to be quite good for mat making. But obviously, if you haven't got anything like that, then you could just go and use a fork. I'll just grab one of those just to show you. Um, so let's just come back in with some of that buttermilk. And I'm just going to add a little bit down there, like so. Um, and then just drag that through the paint. So you should get some of the points and then you can then come in and maybe just start adding just a few little texture lines. Almost like perforations. Like the page has been divided up almost like a quilt. <laughs> Subtle. I'll just grab a wet wipe and just give that a clean off because otherwise it'll know that I've used it. Um, just bring that fork in. I'll get some more milk. Uh, milk. <laughs> I'm obsessed with milk today. It's buttermilk, it's got me going. Right, so I'm just going to do that with a fork. So we've got paint on the tines. So you could actually do a little bit of a pattern. Try not to again subtle in the background, but you know, it doesn't have to be in your face all the time, does it? Okay, so that's satisfied that one. <laughs> Quick clean up, right? Let's get that dried. I'll get my hands clean as well. I'm in a new packet of oh, baby wipes. There we go. Brand new unopened packet. So let me have a tidy up, clean up, and I'll be right back. Because I also think one of the dogs has just woken up, so they're going to be vying for my attention as well in a moment. So I'll be back in a moment. Right, okay, that's dry. So remember when I burnt myself there, that's what I did it on. Right. Right, I've just got a clip on there because it's starting to curl a little bit so we don't want it to get too bad so that's just going to hold that down so that was the making marks with the household item or the kitchen item okie dokie 
So I think the next is going to be add a focal collage element. All right, so let me just go and grab what I've printed off. Okay, so this is the image that I've printed off. So what I'm gonna do, just quickly kind of cut around her head. Um, I think I might just wanna keep some of that hair in as well. It's not necessary for what I want to do. But so I think this is one of those um, images that looks like it's been painted in oils, but actually it's, I think it's computer generated. I think it's probably one of those mid journey kind of affairs that somebody's done. Um, I found this on on Pinterest. I just wanted a, a front on portrait of that of a lady's face. So and it, it's gonna I'm not gonna stick it down as it is. <laughs> it's too easy. Um and not in keeping with the quilt that I want to use. So let's just bring that round. That should do. Right, I'll get rid of that. Don't need that. So look at that. Those skin tones. Hey, eh? pick the right choice of colours. I can hear footsteps in the padding around. It's obviously one of the dogs. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in now, right in the middle, and I'm going to start contouring. So wherever there is a bump, I come the lips and bring that in to the nose and then cut around one side of the nose and bring that right back into the middle and then we'll just kind of do a wavy line all the way up. Now one of the strange things about the human face, I don't know whether you know this, is if you cut around the contours like I've just done there and then turn it over, you also get like a profile view, which is really weird. You can still kind of like see there's a profile view there, look. I know, it's absolutely crazy. So what I want to do is I want to re-glue her down again but do it as though she's broken apart like that. So I think that's probably going to be just perfect. So what I'm what I need is a glue stick. Good old Elmer. Right. So there's only going to be this little part at the bottom. That's kind of going to be holding on to things. So let me place that there and then place it so that the chin is completely aligned. Okay, so that's glued those two little bits together. But what I want to do is just, I just want to trim this edge off. So I'm just going to grab um, a straight edge. If I got a, yes, of course I've got one. All right, so I'm just going to draw a little line just so I know where I'm going before I glue anything else down. In fact, let's just do a not quite straight line 
just do a little bit of a wavy one. There we go. That's it. Okay, lovely. Well, it's not lovely. <laughs> it's a really weird image, but you know, that's what I'm going for. I want it split, like a split personality. Okay, so let's get the glue. Let's wipe some of that down. I'll try and get this done quickly so that it doesn't dry so quick. Because sometimes it does, it dries too quick on your paper before you get it down. All right, let's get her towards the bottom, gives me enough room then to add my quote later. Just give a little bit of a rub, just for that glue to grab. go excellent right i'm just gonna give that a minute to set so let's just tick that off while that's doing that so that's adding our collage element so now use watercolor pencils or crayons back in a little while i was panicking for a moment then because i couldn't find my stabilo all pencils and here we have them all right, so, well, all of them, I'll say. I'm still missing the green. Uh, let's have a look. Shall we use black or shall we use brown? Yeah, let's just use black. Use what we're used to. All right, let's get some water on the brush and we can pick up that turn it into watercolor and then we can now just add it as a little bit of a shadow it's subtle but like i said you don't have to do it in your face all the time I nearly got my hand in that. <laughs> and I'll just flip that round. And we'll have some at this side. Now you could just add it directly onto the page and activate it once it's there, or you could just do what I've done and just take the pencil and add the water to it separately it works just the same really just subtle kind of shading and shadow and you can bring it down as far as you want And because it's water reactive, even when it kind of like dries, you can come back in and add more if you want, if you want more of a dramatic effect. Or you can just leave as is. Let it lie. Whichever rocks your boat, blows your hair back, or whatever. <laughs> okay, but like I said, you don't have to go really heavy with everything. You could just do subtle hints wherever you are. Okay, so let me get that dried off.
Okay, so that's dried. So the last thing really to do is to add the hand lettered quilt or phrase. So what I've got here is some sticky labels and I'm going to use these. I'm going to use this just to kind of give me a way to do some hand lettering but also just to keep it a bit of, a bit controlled um and also it gives me a bit of a white background as well so plus it's sticky so if i write on these on these lines on this label i can then erase that afterwards or use that as a guide um for cutting out so what i'll do is i'm going to just make a note kind of where how many lines i need so i only need one two i think i need three or four all right, so this is going to be fairly smallish. So I don't like I said, I don't have to be too precise and because I can cut them out to wherever I need them to be. So as long as I get the right words on the right line, I should be OK. Um, so. And I'm doing it sketchy. I think I've already gone too large anyway. Yeah, I think I've gone too large. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I'll redraw, I'll turn it round and I'll redraw some lines and I'll come back. All right, I think I'm ready. So. There we go. <laughs> small. Right. Now, I did have a pair of small scissors that I used earlier and I've put them down somewhere. What have I done with them? Oh, do you know I'm useless at this kind of thing. Okay, so I finally found my scissors, which I've just cut them out. So I'm just going to use my little eraser just to see if I can get rid of some of those. I don't actually mind the lines, to be honest. <laughs> it shows, it shows the hand of the artist. Pentimente, as they say in the trade. It shows the mind of the artist as they're working it out. Okay, so that just takes care of that so let's just whip through that so the line don't take the sleeping pills they mess with your head it's kind of paraphrased from um, the band Florence and the Machine from one of their tracks um, I think it's actually one of the first lines from on one, one of the first tracks on one of their albums could be ceremonials it could be the blue and beautiful I can't remember which one um but but I just think it's a really good line 
think it's actually don't take the sleeping pills they mess with my head but i just thought it was a cute kind of it's a good line for an art journal page because there's lots of medication out there that messes with your head all right so now i've used a sticky label which means I'm going to have to use a scalpel um, just to remove the back end. So this is going to be a bit of a, one of those fiddly processes. But infinitely rewarding. If you can get it right. Or do it quickly anyway. Is the trick of getting the point of the blade between the front and the back of the label. And it's not a question of a good eyesight or a steady hand. I think something like this, it's just pure bloody luck. Because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't first time. Like with the, the first line there, that worked straight away. Sometimes you've got to just persevere. Just like that. And then when it does come apart, it comes apart so blooming easy and quickly. Like that just did, and then it's gone back, come back together again. Oh, come on. Right, so this is the last line, but I want it just a little bit slimmer. So I'm going to take just a slither off the top. There we go. <laughs> All right. I think we can take rid of those now and I'm should come back in with that pen and then we'll just make that pop a bit so again I've already mentioned about these pens but if you want to know what they are they're the uh, Signal Uniball Ocean Pens. So these are the ones that are made using recycled plastic that's been taken um, out of the ocean. So it's where they've cleaned some of the plastic and then they've taken the plastic back and they've recycled it and they've made pens out of it. So 75% is recycled plastic and 10% of that is from ocean waste. So and they just so happen to write on acrylic paint and that kind of thing, which is perfect. And I've bought myself a, a set of them. Um, literally, I, I bought like a dozen pens so that I've got them. <laughs> so Uniball I, Ocean Care, 0 0.7, if you're interested. Right, so that's that done. Um, so the last bit, I think. So that's hand lettered quote or phrase. So that's all those. And I've used the word sleep. There you go. I've only gone for the one and we've used whimsy. Um, a sort of serenity. Sleep, no. Right. So include found objects. For example, buttons. Right. OK. I am going to use buttons. And I've got a white one. And I've got a blue one. And I'm going to stick it. <coughs> Excuse. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, did you see all that load of glue come pouring out then? That's just not on. All right, so. 
push that down there and then we'll just use a little bit to hold up this scrap card because waste not want not with that glue there look all that glue there going to waste so what i'm going to do is i'll scrape up some of that we'll see if we can make use of it in there this glue's all right but it does tend to be a bit have a mind of its own sometimes almost like it's alive right I should be able to get rid of those strings. <laughs> I've got two. <laughs> but I think it only needs the one. <laughs> Looking at it, it definitely only needs the one. All right, so I'm going to leave that for a little while to dry. But what I'll also do is just quickly silent date this. So I'll just put my little initials in the reserve and then I'll put today's date which I think is it's the 3rd of November today isn't it so 3 11 23 and then I can just tick off that last one so there we go so we've got all of the eight steps and one I suppose <laughs> of the words for inspiration being sleep so I think mission accomplished so i hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art journal page today if you have please remember to give the video a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video but don't forget if you want to join us over in our mission inspiration facebook group that's the url on the screen there but there also is a clickable link in the description area below this video so that's all from me for now i'll see you all again very very soon Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget, you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.